Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome back to the Lightroom Blog Channel. I am going to talk about Lightroom 9 in this one. Hey folks, Lightroom 9 is out. Uh, new versions always get uh, introduced to Adobe Max. Adobe Max is on at the moment. So probably this time next year it'll be Lightroom 10. Or in this case, Lightroom Classic. Now, it's not revolutionary. It hasn't been. And in fact, in, it's all its competitors are just adding new features with their version updates as well. There's nothing huge about them. Uh, there are some nice little features in this. And we're just going to talk to them. You know, it is like a glorified dial update. and But it's just that every year they just go with a version number increase anyway. So rather than me just go through stuff, I can talk some, through some stuff that's just talk about it. Um, I'm not going to do it to camera as well. So I'm just going to dive straight in. So let's get going on this. So the very, very first thing that you need to know is your catalog up here will be updated. As you can see here, this is now 7-2. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that means that it's an, an updated catalog because it's got the dash on it. I might rename it and rename the actual um, previews file and smart previews file to go with it and all that stuff as well, just so that they're, you know, it's not having all these dashes so that way, way if you keep updating catalogs you end up with like one dash two dash two dash two dash two dash two so you know i'll probably give it a rename but anyway so the catalog will be updated so let's talk about some of the stuff that's been added so i'm actually inside the collection here but if i go to collections this is all our collections we, we've had this little filter bar which is really cool but you can now you can filter by color labels so if you've been using color labels and um, so i click uh, purple here you can see I've got one that's labeled purple. Now I do actually have a few that are labeled other colors. This works on folders as well. And to get out of this, which is probably just as important, you just click back on all and that brings you back to all of your collections. Uh, the other thing that you can do with images as well, if you are in, let's go back to all photographs here for a second. And make sure we're on none for a second here. Right, so that is on none should load out some stuff here and let's get away from the nude photos for a second there now so that you're not offended and um, there's some kind of burlesque show stuff there that'll be okay but the reason i'm doing this is because we can actually search on depth maps okay so if we go into filters and um, uh, oh sorry let me press filter bar rather so that is the slash for the filter bar actually apparently I have the filter bar showing Okay, and we can go into uh, metadata. So we can search for depth. So images that have a depth map in them, you can actually filter for them and just show ones that have a depth map. So unknown, has depth, no depth. So obviously I've only got a couple of files here with depth maps in them, um, which were sampled once shot because I only have an iPhone SE and a 6S. So I'm not shooting anything with depth maps. So there's some stuff shot with depth maps, including this one here from Laura Shoe. Right, so depth maps, you can filter for them. So if you are shooting a lot of iPhone shots and you're looking for the stuff you shot portraits, you're able to find them really, really quickly. Um, I'm just going to jump out of there altogether for a second, go back to all, and go back to my little collection here for a second. And so if I go into develop, say D for develop. So when you're in develop and you go to presets, you've got groups, so like my group here. So we can now export group. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, handy. And of course, clearly, if we just do a single right click here, and um, we can export. And if we bring that up, we bring up an export dialog. All right, so that lets you decide where you want to put this stuff. All right, so we're able to export presets and preset groups now. All right, now, in Lightroom 8, we got process version five. So the difference with Lightroom uh, 9, is now is if if it didn't have a uh, process version 5 already and um, so let me go so let's 
So let me grab, say, this image here. Okay, and go to develop with it. Okay, we can see here that it's telling me that it's in process version 3. So, so we got a slightly different thing. So let me say I would just grab texture and I push texture. Right, we can see straight away that this has gone away. So what happens is that as soon as you do an edit on an older image with an older process version, it would automatically update um, to version 5. Well, specifically for 3 or 4 in this case. All right. So if you are in, if you want to select a bunch of images, like say here we're in E, say we're in loop view, and I wanted to get rid of a bunch of images, you hold down the shift key and then delete, and it will delete them. So shift delete. All right. Oh, it's a random collection set. Yeah, well, if we were in, uh, if we were in a folder, we could do that. All right. Now, just to mention quickly on the system requirements, on Mac, you have to be 10.13 or higher. Uh, Windows 10 is now uh, like 18.03 or later. So just so you know that this is because of changes with 64 bit installers and all this kind of stuff. All right. If we go to keywords here, we have this keyword list and the keyword enumeration is much faster. So you get to see the keywords actual. And, you know, so, you know, basically it's just speeding up stuff as well, which is a bit of a problem. Right, if we we're in develop, okay, and we're like, here we have a history, right? Okay, so we now have a situation with history where we can clear all. Um, so, like, say we're here and you can go clear history above this step. Okay. So you can get rid of sections of history. All right. So, you know, it's just handy if you want to clear out something. Why would you want to clear out history? Well, all of this information is stuff that's stored in the catalog. And if you wipe the history of all of your images, which you can do, of course, um, you actually make your catalog much smaller. All right. You don't need the history steps necessarily. Um, the, 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 the settings will still be there if you clear the history. You know, the history is just showing the steps. But that actually takes up space. But you can decide to get rid of them, you know. So let's say I go here, I go clear above this step. All right. So all of the stuff that was there is gone. Now, personally, I prefer clear below this step. But anyway, all right. Okay. And there's a few sync fixes for bugs. And in terms of lenses and stuff like that and cameras, it's really kind of the big things to know are the iPhone 11 have been added. And then lens wise, the Huawei um, P20 and 30 stuff like that have all been kind of added for lenses there is preliminary support for the nikon z50 which is their new mirrorless camera stuff like the um, a7r4 has been added and the or 100x oh, sorry rx100 mark 7 the sony and the, and the fuji ax7 for fuji lovers they have been added so now that we've got this far let us start talking about the actual big features these are just kind of little things okay okay so speed things up i've I just jumped in and basically grabbed a couple of images together and these are a panel it's quite an old panel and they're just jpegs so hopefully this will be reasonably quick for this because sometimes you know you don't want to be waiting so i'm going to go photo merge panorama uh, and that will bring up the panel okay now we have this new option here which is actually fantastic which is one of the kind of the biggies now, it's going to look like a kind of a small thing when we're going through it, but it's actually really, really nice. So what this is called Fill Edges. So we click on Fill Edges. It will come in here where we have, see this, all this kind of stuff here. And it will literally fill in the edges, right? So now you can do boundary warp, which kind of stretches the image around to fit. But what we have here is, see the way these are moving? Have a look and see the way stuff is moving around. So stuff on the edge is going to get stretched or changed. But with this one here, fill edges leaves these bits where they are, and it basically uses content to wear fill to fill it in. Let's do uh, let's do the actual merge itself now. Well, that took a little bit longer than I anticipated. I had to restart Lightroom. That does that's not the first time that's happened after I've had a, a new update either, um, where stuff just hasn't worked, and it's happened for tutorials and Zoom as well, where I've had to literally restart, and then I've restarted and it's been perfect. So it could be just something funny from the update. But anyway, it literally took seconds that time instead of me waiting like 10 minutes. You can actually see in my timestamp 
here what it was, how long ago it was. Anyway, um, so let's have a look here. As we can see, the edges here look okay. They're actually respectable. They, they don't look bad at all. So I'm pretty pleased with it. So, I mean, it's definitely something I'll be using. Um, you could you do a mixture of boundary warp and um, fill edges at the same time. So you kind of have a little bit of a mix of both if you want that as well. So, all right. And this is a very old long walk and go away. That was when we were building the museum. It's going to be doing a couple of billion euro uh, stuff in it. Well, billion, million euro, like... Work on it to add stuff to it. So if you're coming to Galway, we'll be working on see the museum that is Spanish art. Another feature you should come and see in Galway because Galway is a magnificent city when it's not raining. Okay, so the other thing, which is kind of the highlight feature, I'm sorry I've left till the end, but it is the highlight feature, and that is something we're going to have a look at really quickly here. Is in export, and that we can see we can now tick things here, so we can have more than one export happening at the same time. So we could, for example, here uh, create something, say. So this is going to be full size, full res, okay, and uh, normal sharpening, no watermarking. So I'm going to add this here. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this um, multi-export. Uh, just because I'm showing you how you would do this, how you set it up, multi. All right, and it's going to be um, full high res, All right, because it's 100. Okay, full high res. Right, and then let's say we're going to do a second one. You could have as many as you want. So, uh, so long edge of 2048, which is kind of the large size for Facebook or for social media in general. And we put that around 75, just for example. And let's say in this case here, you always want to have a watermark on it. So you could have your watermark on it. So, okay. And so again, add that to multi. And we're going to call this... Um, 2048 watermarked. Okay. Create and now I choose folder. All right. And all of them. Not, so we can come down here. We got multi. So we can select the two of these. Okay. And it says some sections are hidden when presets are checked. So that means that it's just hiding the output stuff. So it's dependent on whatever is per output. And um, just so you can't see them because uh, they're obviously separate. All right. So you go export and I've got show and finder set. So it should bring up. Then, so see, choose a folder because I have got choose a folder selected. So, and you can, you know, choose a folder in uh, wherever you like. So, and pictures, export, choose. Now, I could have, they probably have the same name. I could have given them different names. But let's do that so that way we see what happens. Click done, enable export. Right, so the two now come up. So this one's got a watermark on it, and that one's marked dash two. All right. So the images you can see they're different sizes as well. All right. So that is a look at export, multi-export, which is kind of the big feature. All right. So yeah, I know that's kind of a long, long video, and because there's lots of small stuff. And um, the two big features are obviously the fact that you've got the fill edges, which is really nice for panels if you do them, and I do and multi-export is great and where i would generally do that is where i do want to get a bunch of stuff out for creating the high res and the stuff for social media at the same time because it's the one thing that really really annoys me is that i have to do them for different sizes and i think that if i do it right i might be able to set it up with dropbox and for the social media ones so they automatically go to dropbox and that if i can set up ifttt if this then that dot com uh, with a dropbox a particular dropbox folder I may be able to set it up to automatically post to social media. Okay, so I will figure that out. Anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the video, do subscribe. Obviously, you've seen my last video. Um, we're seven weeks on from uh, the, the passing of my wife, unfortunately. Um, am I ready to jump into the channel more and more? Not really. No, you know, things are moving slowly. I'll get there. Um, it's like building planks over a chasm, to be honest with you. But folks, thank you for taking time to watch this and I will see you in the next video. And yes, there will be a next video. All right.